be a good night. Be careful. It's my heart. It's not my watch you're holding. It's my heart. It's called music, it's Mama. It's not the note I sent you that you quickly burned. It's not the book I lent you that you never returned. Remember, it's my heart. The heart with which so willingly I part. It's not the note I sent you. Be careful. It's my heart. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Life Mosaics inaugural production of Lost in Yonkers. Also, if you feel you need a candy or a cough drop, we ask that you please unwrap it now. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I hate coming here, don't you? It's hot. I'm so hot. I'd hate coming here if it was cool. Pop doesn't even like to come here and it's his own mother. I was so afraid of her when I was a kid. She'd come out of that room with a limp and a cane and look as if she was gonna kill you. When I was five, I drew a picture of her and called it Frankenstein's grandma. Did she ever see it? If she did, you'd be an only child today. Pop said she could swing her cane so fast, she could've been one of the greatest golfers in the world. All I remember was I hated kissing her. It felt like putting your lips on a wrinkled ice cube. Yeah, she's cold, all right. She's the only one at Mom's funeral who didn't cry. What do you think Pop's talking to her so long for? Because she's deaf in one ear, isn't she? Yeah. You ever notice how there's something wrong with everyone on Pop's side of the family? Mom used to tell me that. She didn't tell me. Like who? Like Aunt Bella. She's a little, you know, clothes for repairs. I don't care. I like her. Now she's a hothouse grandma. I didn't say she wasn't nice, but she's got marbles rolling around up there. Mom said she got the way because when she was a kid, she was so, like, grandma would hit her in the head every time she did something stupid, which only made her stupider. She wasn't stupid at making great ice cream sodas. <laughs> wow. Hooray. She's 35 years old and can make ice cream sodas. They don't give you a high school diploma for putting the cherry on top of the whipped cream. She went to high school? A little. She missed the first year because she couldn't find it. You kids all right? Yeah, Pop, fine. I'll be through talking to Grandma in a few minutes. What are you lying on the floor for? Don't do that, Artie. You'll crease your pants. You want Grandma to see you with creased pants? Oh. What's he want me to do? Carry an iron around with me? He's afraid of her. Same as Aunt Bella. Like, Aunt Bella couldn't count so good. So instead of two scoops of ice cream and a soda, she'd put three or four for the same price. If Grandma saw, wacko, another couple of IQ points gone. Oh, here, and Gert when she was a kid. See how her head is down? Probably ducking. The old cane was coming at her. You don't think Aunt Gert's a little coconuts, too? Nah, she's just sick. She's got bad lungs or something. <laughs> bad lungs, my eye. She can't talk right. She says the first half of her sentence breathing out and the second half sucking in. You've seen it. Oh, do it for me. I don't want to. Come on, do it. No, I don't want to. Do it. Hello, Jay. And how's your father? And 
How's your little brother body? I love it. I love it when you do that. I once saw her try and blow out a candle, and halfway there she sucked it back on. You didn't. With these two eyes. Uh, Mom said she got the way because when she was a kid, she was so afraid of Grandma. Uh, she never allowed her kids to cry. Never? Never. Grandma's worried about the doilies. Don't lean your head back on the doilies. It gets grease on them. She just had them laundered. You mean only people who just had a shampoo can sit here? And what about Uncle Louie? You know what he is, don't you? Yeah, a gangster. You believe that? You bet. They say he's some big mobster's henchman. You mean he's got a bad back? Not a hunchback, a henchman. And real tough, he's a bag man. What do you mean a bag man? He, he puts people in bags? Not people, money, hot money. He collects bags of it from one guy and delivers it to the mob. Hey, there's Aunt Bella. Is she coming up? No, she's walking past the house. I'll bet she's lost again. Aunt Bella. Hi, it's Jay and Artie. Up here. That's right, up here. Here she comes. She ought to wear a compass or something. <laughs> Will you keep your voices down? Grandma said, what are they yelling for? Oh, we were calling down to Aunt Bella. She's on her way up. Can I take my jacket off, Pop? After Grandma sees you. And no ice cream sodas from Aunt Bella, even if she asks. I don't want anything to upset Grandma. Fix the doilies. Is she all right? Uh, her back's bothering her again. When Aunt Bella comes, tell her Mama wants a back rub. Comb your hair, Audie, and don't make a mess. Jay, Audie, it's me, Aunt Bella. Can I come in? Guess you forgot how to open a door. <laughs> I forgot my key. How'd you get in downstairs? I used my spare key. I'm glad you called me. I walked right by the house, didn't I? Sometimes I daydream so much I think I should carry an alarm clock. Oh, God, I'm so happy to see you. Artie, Jay, my two favorite cousins. Aren't we your nephews? Of course you are. My cousins, my nephews, my boys. Come here, give your Aunt Bella a kiss. Let me take a look at you. Oh, you got so much bigger. You're growing up so fast it almost makes me cry. Where's your father? I haven't seen your father in so long. Eddie, it's Bella. Is he here? Uh, he's in there talking to Grandma. Oh, I'd better not disturb him then. Did she ask for me? Pop said she wanted a back rub when you came in. Oh, did you tell her I was here? No, you just came in. Did you tell her where I went? Well, we didn't know where you went. Well, let's not tell her I'm here yet, then we won't be able to visit. Oh, you're both getting so handsome. Thank you. Thank you, Aunt Bella. I bet I look a lot older to you too. Do I? The truth, tell me. I don't think so. No? Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I'm 35 and I don't even look it, do I? No. Not to me. And how old are you boys now? About 20? I'm 13 and a half. I'm 15 and a half. Well, that adds up to about 35, so we could be brothers and sisters. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. I just got back from the movies. I had the most wonderful time. I wish I knew you were here, then we all could have gone. What'd you see? I don't know. I couldn't find the theater I was looking for, so I went to the one that I found. But it was better than the picture I wanted to see. It had Betty Davis and George Brent. Maybe we can all go again next week if I could find the wrong theater again. Sure, I'd love to. Why do you take your jackets off, you two? <laughs> Look at you both perspiring. No, we're fine. We're cool in here with the fan. They had air conditioning at the movie house. I was actually cold. I felt so happy for the actors to be in an air conditioned theater. I don't think the actors feel it. Uh, they're just pictures on the screen. <laughs> I know that's silly. I meant they'd be happy to know that the people who were watching their movie were nice and cool, so we enjoyed the movie better. Oh, right. I bet they would. I bet I know what would make you two cool in a second. How about? A big ice cream soda deluxe with everything in it. Oh, look at your faces lighting up. Come on, I'll make it for you downstairs. We'll have to wait. Um, Pop will be out in a second, and he wants us to see Grandma. Well, that's no trouble. I'll bring him up here. What kind? Chocolate, vanilla, butter pecan. What's your favorite, Artie? All of them. I can make that with three different kinds of ice cream. I used to make them with four different kinds. They were selling like crazy, but we lost a fortune. How long ago did she ask for me? Grandma, a couple of minutes ago. 
Did you tell her I was here? Well, we told Pop we saw you downstairs, but maybe he didn't say anything to her. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. She heard my footsteps coming up the stairs. How? Isn't she partly deaf? Oh, sure. But the other part here is perfectly. <laughs> what about a small sundae? Chocolate ice cream with hot fudge sauce and some whipped cream and chopped walnuts? Are you going to say no to that, Artie? I bet you can't. Say no, let me hear you. It sounds like just a small one. He can't. It's just that Pop told us to wait. Oh, your father. He never takes anything from anybody. I couldn't even give your mother a cup of coffee. Did you know that? Where is she, anyway? <sighs> She's dead. Mom is dead. Yes. I, I know. I meant... Where is she buried? At Mount Israel Cemetery in the Bronx. You were at her funeral, remember? You mean the first time? What do you mean the first time? When I came in the car, not the bus. The bus? But, no, no, no. I, I'm thinking of someone else. Sometimes my mind wanders. The kids at school used to say, hey, Bella, lost and found called, and said, come get your brains. But I didn't think that was funny. I bet you miss Mom a lot, don't you? Don't you, Artie? Yeah, a lot. She was a lot like your father. Very independent, stuck to her own family mostly. She didn't get along too well with your grandmother. No one does. My sister Gert was once engaged to a man. She brought him home to meet grandma and the next day he moved to Boston. That's too bad. Uh, don't tell grandma I said that. I won't. <laughs> You're both so shy. I used to be shy. Grandma didn't like me to talk too much. I had a lot of friends, but I didn't talk to them. It's a shame your mother couldn't have had more children. She didn't, did she? No. No. Because it'd be easier for you now that she's gone. Big families are important when you have trouble in your life. We were a big family. Me and your father, Louis and Gert. Well, that was before Rose and Aaron died. Rose was just a baby, but Aaron was almost 12 years old, so I didn't know Rose as well as Aaron. You never knew them, did you? I don't think we were born yet. No, I don't think so. My father died before I was born, but I wasn't sad about that. That's good? Because I loved him so much. Did you know you could love someone who died before you were born? I guess so. Because I knew he would have taken care of me. Like your father takes care of you. You know what I mean? I think so. Yeah. So, how about that Sunday? It's just going to sit down there melting on the counter if I make it and you don't eat it. Last chance, Audie, yes or no? I, I'd like to... Maybe later. No! Not later! It's too late now! I'm not asking again. You hurt my feelings to both of you. I know you miss your mother, but that doesn't mean you could be disrespectful to me. I always liked your mother, whether she took coffee from me or not. And you can tell your father that to both of you, you hear me? I'm sick of it! Uh, you see why I don't like to come here too much? Where's Aunt Bella? I thought I just heard her. She's in the bathroom. I heard the door slam. Did you say anything to upset her? Yeah, everything. Is it time to go yet, Pop? We'll go when I tell you. You haven't even seen your grandmother yet. Stop rushing me. You just got here, didn't you? <sighs> Bella, it's Eddie. Mama wants to see you. It's her back again. Bella? Is she all right? How do you know when she's all right? Hey, no remarks about Aunt Bella, you hear me? Uh, she loves you boys, always has. So just sit there and be quiet. God, my head is splitting. Was that your father banging on the door just now? Yes. Is he angry with me? With you? No. Oh, I hope not. Do I look better? Better than when? Than before, when you said I wasn't looking well. I didn't say that. Then who did? Jay? Uh, maybe. Did you say it, Jay? And nobody said anything. Oh, I know. It was Grandma. She didn't like the way I looked today. She hates this dress. I made it myself. Really? It took me almost a year. Grandma wants you, Aunt Bella. Oh, yeah. As soon as I finish Mama's rub, I'll get dinner started. You boys hungry? I don't know. Jay knows. 
Tell her, Jay. I'm not so sure we're staying for dinner. Of course you are. You think I'd let you go all the way home without dinner? Are you gonna say no to me again, are you? Uh, I'm not. I'm eating. I'm hungry. No matter what Jay does, I'm eating. Well, we're all eating. It's Sunday. And you think about what you want for dessert, Artie, because whatever you want is what you're gonna get. Start thinking now. I started, I started. I want a big ice cream soda with a sundae with whipped cream and hot fudge sauce. Is that all right? Sounds perfect to me. And don't give any to Jay. He missed the deadline. Don't be mad. I had to say it. I was afraid she was gonna strangle me with a towel. It's up to Pop. We'll see what Pop says. Jay, get me a glass of water, please. All right, Pop. Oh, it must be over a hundred in here. Get your shoes off the sofa. What's wrong with you? I'm feeling kind of faint. What do you mean, faint? Kids your age don't faint. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting older. <sighs> here, Pop, nice and cool. Don't spill it on the rug. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right. Time to talk. Jay, sit down. Next to Artie. I, um... I wanted to tell you boys, um... Is anything the matter, Pop? It's so damn hot in here, isn't it? So, I just had a talk inside with your grandmother because... I've had a problem. Whenever your mother and I had a problem, we always used to hide it from you because we didn't want you to worry. Well, you can't keep cancer a secret forever, can you? You knew, Jay, without me telling you, didn't you? Yes, Pop. I did everything I could. The best doctors, the best hospitals I could get into. She had a nice room, didn't she? <clears throat> Semi-private, no wards or anything. I know, Pop. We're not rich people, boys. I know that comes as no surprise to you, but I'm gonna tell you something now I hoped I'd never have to tell you in my life. The doctors, the hospitals cost me everything I had. I was broke and I went into debt. So I went to a man, a loan shark, a money lender. I couldn't go to a bank because you can't put up pain and heartache as collateral. A loan shark doesn't need any collateral. His collateral is your desperation. So he gives you his money. And he has this clock. And what it keeps time of is your promise. If you keep your promise, it turns off the clock. And if not, it keeps on ticking. And after a while, your heart starts ticking louder than the clock understand something this man kept your mother alive it was his painkillers that made her last days bearable and for that I'm grateful Jay remember what I taught you about not about taking from people never take because you'll always be obligated so you never take for yourself but for ones you love there comes a time when you have no choice there's a man I owe in New York, $9,000. I could work four more years and save and I wouldn't have $9,000. He wants his money this year. To his credit, I'll say one thing. He sent flowers to the funeral. No extra charge on my bill. Pop, let me finish. There's no way that I can pay this man back. So, what'll he do? Kill me? Maybe. If he kills me, not only will he lose his money, but it'll probably cost him again for the flowers to my funeral. <laughs> I needed a miracle. And the miracle happened. This country went to war. A war between us and the Japanese and the Germans. And if my mother hadn't come to this country 35 years ago, I could be fighting for the other side. Except, I don't think they're putting guns in the hands of Jews over there. Let me tell you something. 
I love this country because they took in the Jews, they took in the Italians and the Irish and everyone else. Remember this, there's a lot of Germans in this country fighting for America, but no Americans out there fighting for Germany. I hate this war. And God forgive me for saying it, it's gonna save my life. There are jobs that I could get now that I couldn't get before, and I got a job. I'm working for a company that sells scrap iron. I thought you just threw scrap iron away. Now they're building ships with it. Without the slightest idea of what I'm doing, I, I could make that $9,000 in less than a year. That's great, Paul. Don't say it until I'm finished. The factories that I would be selling to are in the South. Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Texas. I'd be gone around 10 months, living in trains, buses, hotels, any place I could find a room. Uh, we'd be free and clear and back together again in less than a year. Okay? So, now comes the question. Where do you two live while I'm gone? God, it's so hot in here. Uh, please, Pop, don't make us live here. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? I have no choice, Jay. I don't know where else to turn. Oh, what about where we're living now? I gave the apartment up. I told the landlady yesterday. You gave it up? She raised the rent. Everybody's trying to make money off this war. And the truth is, by the end of the year, I'd end up owing $11,000. While I'm away, the clock doesn't stop ticking. Uh, Grandma wouldn't be happy with us. Oh, we're slobs. We leave everything on the floor. Um, Archie's always breaking things. Remember when uh, I broke the good water pitcher? And the ink stands on the sofa. All mine. I'm dangerous, Pop. Listen to me, both of you. It took me an hour and a half to convince her. It's not like she doesn't like you, but she's old and she's set in her ways. And she's worried about people being around Bella. Me too! She didn't positively say yes. She's gonna think about it. She'll come out, she'll talk to you, she'll see how it goes. It's up to us to convince her that you two won't be any trouble. That's why I want you looking so neat. Do you understand how important this is? Uh, and what if Grandma did take us in? And then you'd be obligated, Pop. Uh, don't you think you have enough obligations now? I'm not asking for myself. I'm asking for my boys. For my boys, I'll be obligated. There's nothing to discuss anymore. It's up to Grandma now. And it's up to you. I'll see if she's ready. If she says no, I can't take this job. I can't pay back the man I gave my promise to. Just show Grandma what a terrific present she's getting by having the two of you live here. Straighten your tie, Jay. Fix your collar, Artie. Stand straight, both of you. That's my boys. Oh my God, what if she says yes? Uh, she won't. Because I'm going to break something. Uh, what's your favorite thing in this room? Uh, you're not breaking anything. Because we have to stay here and save Pop's life. And what about our lives? We could grow up like Aunt Bella. I could be in seventh grade for the next 20 years. If you act like this when Grandma comes out, that's like putting a gun to Pop's head and pulling the trigger. Oh, so I stay here and get whacked in the head every time we cry. Or suck candles back on like Aunt Gert. <gasps> One more word for you, and I'll whack you, I swear to God. Oh my God, it tore. Well, that's it. The war is over for us. Jesus. Pop bought the grave next to Mom. It's all your goddamn fault. Uh, I hate Mom for dying. I hate Pop for putting us in this spot. I hate Grandma for being just a rotten old lady. I hate everybody in this whole goddamn world. You ready, boys? What the hell is going on here? What are you crying about? What happened to your collar? Nothing. Don't tell me nothing. Were you fighting? You were fighting, weren't you? I don't believe it. If I can't trust you for two minutes, how can I trust you for a year? You think I would do this to my mother and my sister Bella? I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you both. Wait outside, out in the street. I don't want to look at you. Go on, get out. We weren't fighting. It was an accident. I was trying to straighten my collar, and I straightened it too tight. Uh, uh, I was crying about Mom. 
She'd be so sad to see you in such trouble. Oh, we want to live here. We like Yonkers. Are you serious, or are you just trying to lie your way out of this? Uh, serious. Very serious. It's the most serious we've been in our lives. I hope so, for all our sakes. All right. Fix yourself up. Uh, straight, tuck in your collar. Uh, wipe your eyes. I'll get Grandma. <laughs> Bella! What's wrong, Bella? What is it? Did Mama say something? Uh, was she angry at you? <laughs> oh, no, no. She does, too, love your back rubs. She told me that. She just has a lot on her mind today. Are you all right now, sweetheart? <laughs> yes, I know you're lonely. I know how hard it is to be with her all the time. But, Bella, I've got some good news for you. You, maybe you won't be alone anymore. You know who might be staying here if Mama says yes? Arthur and Jay. Wouldn't that be nice having Arthur and Jay here? And they'd live here, they'd spend time with you, and you'd have somebody to talk to at night. Would you like that, honey? Yes. All right, then give me a smile and a hug. Don't go, Eddie. Stay here and live with us. I miss you so much. She's so mean sometimes. Oh, no, she's not. She's just getting old. And I can't stay, honey. I have to go away for a while. But the boys will be here with you. And they're looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> would you like to lie down in your room for a while now, Bella? Mama has to talk to the boys. No, I, I want to stay here with you. It'd be easier, I think, if Mama talked to the boys alone. I want to stay here with you! Oh, God. All right. Uh, so you sit right there, uh, and, uh, but you be real quiet, and uh, just don't interrupt, because we don't want anything to upset Mama. Okay. Here goes. Um, Artie and I are really hoping this works out, Aunt Bella. Shh. Mustn't interrupt. Oh, yeah, right. Her back is killing her, but she doesn't want me to help her. Jeez. <laughs> okay, Mama. Hello, Grandma. Hello, Grandma. Uh, I know you haven't seen the boys in a while, Mama. Uh, they wanted to be here, but with their mother sick for so long, they felt they uh, should spend as much time as they could with her. They've grown since you've seen them, haven't they? This is the little one. Yes, Arthur. He's two years younger. Is that right, Artie? Uh, yes, I'm two years younger than him. This one I remember more. This one looks like his mother. Yes, a lot of people tell me that. What's wrong with your eyes? Uh, my eyes? Oh, they're a little red. Uh, I got something in them and scratched them too hard. You were crying, maybe. <laughs> me? No, I never cry. Big boy shouldn't cry. Uh, I know. I haven't cried in years. Uh, a couple times when I was a baby. Oh, uh, they're strong kids, Mama, both of them. Jacob, eh? Uh, yes, but they call me Jay. No, I don't like Jay. Jacob is her name. Uh, sure, Jacob is fine. This is Arthur. Arthur, but they call me Artie. I do not call you Artie. Sure, I love Arthur. Like King Arthur. You go to school? Yeah. But yes, I go to the same school as Jacob. Which one is the smart one? They both do very well in school, Mom. They'll tell me! Which one is the smart one? Jacobus! He can say he's in everything. I'm better at sports. Sports? Baseball, basketball, football. You play in the mud, in the dirt. You come home with filthy shoes and make marks 
Wool over the floor. No, never. I clean them off the field. I bring a brush of polish and shine them up on a bench. If the smart one is smart, he'll make sure that you do. No, they're very neat boys. Even their mother said so. So, tell me. Why do you want to live with Grandma? Why don't you tell Grandma, Jakob? Uh, uh, um, so, uh, Pop has to go away, and we had to give up our apartment. Um, and he said we, uh, we had the opportunity to live here with, uh, with you, our only living grandmother, and um, uh, oh, our only living Aunt Bella. We thought that families should sort of stick together. Now this country's at war with German Japan, so we can be together th during times like this. Um, uh, and also so that, uh, uh, no, that's all. And this is the smart one. <laughs> I thought he said that very well, Mama. And uh, this the King Arthur, why do you want to live with Grandma? Because we have no place else to go. I think what Artie is trying to say, Mama, no. is that we... He knows what he wants to say. I think maybe this is the smart one. He's always been very honest, but he's just a boy. So, you have no place else to go. That's why you want to live with Grandma. All right. Now, Grandma will tell you why she doesn't think you should live with her. This house is no place for boys. I am an old woman. I don't like to talk. I don't like noise. I don't like people in the house. I had six children once. I don't need more again. Bella and I, we take care of the store on six days a week. On Sundays, we rest. Today is Sunday, and I am not resting. Bella is not good with people too long. A little bit. Yes, then uh, she gets excited. You understand what I'm saying? We are, we are, uh, what would you do in, in this house? There are no, no games in this house. There are no toys in this house. I don't like the radio after six o'clock. The news, yes, that's all. We go to sleep at nine o'clock, we get up at five o'clock. I don't have friends. Bella don't have friends. You would not be happy here. Unhappy boys, I don't need. Mama, can I just say something? No! I I'll just say something. I think about this inside because anger has been in me for a long time. Why should I do this? What do I owe your father? When did he ever come around here after he married your mother? And I never saw him because she turned him against me, his own mother. And I didn't like her. She didn't like me. I'm not afraid to tell the truth, either. I don't wish anyone's death. Maybe she was a good mother to you. May she rest in peace. To me, she was nothing. And your father was afraid of her. That's why he stopped coming here. You're big boys now. And how many times have I seen you since you were born? Four, five times. Those aren't grandchildren, those are strangers. And now he comes to me for help. He cried in my bedroom, not like a man, like a child, he cried. I buried a husband and two children and I didn't cry. I didn't have time. Bella was born with scarlet fever and didn't talk till she was five years old. And I didn't cry. Your father's sister Gertrude can't talk without choking. And I didn't cry. And maybe one day they'll find Louis dead in the street. And I won't cry. No, that's how I was raised, to be strong. And when they beat us with sticks in Germany when we were children. And I didn't cry. You don't survive in this world without being like steel. Your father wants you to grow up. First, let him grow up. When he learns to be a father, like I learned to be a mother, then he won't need my help. 
You think I'm cruel? You think I'm a terrible person? That the grandma would say things like this? I can see from your faces what you think. Good. It'll make you hard. It'll make you strong. Then you won't need anybody's help. So, that is my decision. Maybe one day you'll thank me for it. Give the boys an ice cream cone, Bella. Then come inside and finish my legs. You're right, Mama. I am the weak one. I am the crybaby. Always was. When you wouldn't pick me up and hug me as a child, I cried. When my brother and sister died, I cried. And I still haven't stopped crying since Evelyn died. But you're wrong about one thing. She didn't turn me against you. She turned me towards her, to loving, to caring, to holding someone when they needed holding. I'm sorry I didn't bring the boys out here more. Maybe the reason I didn't was because I was afraid they'd learn something here that I tried to forget. Maybe they just learned it today. I'm sorry about bothering you on your Sunday. I'm sorry about intruding on your rest. I'm sorry about what they did to you as a child in Berlin. I'm sure it was terrible. But this is Yonkers, Mama. I'm not angry at you for turning me and the boys down. I'm angry at myself for not knowing any better. Take care of yourself, Mama. Never mind the ice cream cones, Bella. I've used up all my obligations for this year. Come on, boys, we're going. I said, let's go. Artie, we'll have dinner another night. Why don't you and Jay go home and pack your things, and I'll get the bed ready and make room in the closet for when you move in. Thanks, Bella, but Mom and I just decided uh, it's not a good idea. And Jay, you make a list of all the things you boys like for breakfast, and I'll make sure we have it. And don't forget your toothbrushes, because we don't carry them in the store. And each of you, bring something from your house that you really love, even if it's big, and we'll find some place to put it. Bella, that's enough! This is not your business. How about a picture of your mother? We can put it right here on the table. It'll be the last thing you see at night and the first thing you see in the morning. Oh, it's going to be such fun with you boys here. Oh, Mama's right. I, I do get so excited around people, but it makes me so happy. Bit of nux, Brickin! That is enough! They are going and that is the end of it. No, Mama. They're not going. They're staying. Because if you make them go, I'll go too. I know I've said it a thousand times, but this time I mean it. I could go to the home. The home would take me. You're always telling me that. And if I go, you'll be all alone. And you're afraid to be alone, Mama. Nobody knows that but me. But you don't have to be anymore, Mama, because we'll all be together now. You and me and Jay and Artie. Won't that be fun, Mama? Jay and Artie. Well, I tried phoning you the other night, and I forgot that the phone is in the candy store, so you probably didn't hear it. Well, I've been to Kentucky, Georgia, Tennessee, and West Virginia. 
don't complain about Aunt Bella's cooking to me because there isn't anything I've eaten down here that wasn't fried, smoked, hashed, gritted, or pwned, or caught in a swamp, a tree, or coming out of a hole in the ground. Right now, I'd go into debt again just to eat an onion roll. <laughs> Although business is good, I've had one minor setback. I've developed what the doctors call an irregular heartbeat. He says it's not serious, but doesn't think I should be traveling so much. But I can't afford to stop now. An irregular heartbeat doesn't sound too good. God, I wish there was some way for us to make some money. I mean, real money, not kid money. What if one night we cut off Grandma's braids and sold it to the army for barbed wire? <laughs> I can't believe we're fighting a war to make this a better war for someone like you. <laughs> Is Mama sleeping? Don't tell me you'll wake her up. Jay, Audie, the most wonderful and exciting thing happened to me tonight. But don't ask me, I can't tell you. You're my good luck charms, the both of you. You think I don't hear you coming up the stairs? You think I don't know what time it is? Eleven o'clock! You think I don't know where you've been? Just to the movies, Ma. Oh, movies, movies, movies. You waste your money and your life in the movies. And then you come home by yourself? Do you know what kind of men are on the street at eleven o'clock? I didn't see a soul, Ma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look for trouble. You find trouble. No one bothers me, Ma. And then you waste money on movie magazines and, and dream Hollywood dreams and things that don't happen to people like us. Sometimes they do. Oh, never. Never. You give me the magazine. I don't want the trash in this house. It's my magazine, Ma. I bought it with my own money. No, my money. Everything you have is because I give to you. Give me the magazine. Please don't do this to me in front of the boys, Mama. Oh, you bring the magazine in the house in front of the boys. You give me the magazine in front of the boys. Give it to me now, Bella. When I'm dead, you can buy your own magazine. No, I won't, Mama. Because you'll find a way to get them anyway. You want to pay my electric bill? And you just try cutting my braids off. You get your fingers chopped off. Dear boys, this'll have to be a short one. Well, I'm in Houston, Texas, and I just got plum tuckered out. That's how they talk down here. I had to take a week off and rest. Not to worry. I'll be back on the road real soon, and I promise to make up the time. Love, Pop. Bella's out. We have the house to ourselves. We're free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Will you shut up? She could be back any minute. Do you know what she'd do if she saw you jumping on her chair? Yeah, she would chop off my legs, and Aunt Bella would cook them for dinner. 
Hey, Artie, there's that car again. What car? Uh, you know, the black Studebaker. The two guys who came looking for Uncle Louie. They look like killers to me. What do you think they want? I don't know. Let's give them Grandma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get out of there. They just keep circling and circling. Aren't you afraid of guys like that? No. I lived up here for a month. I can take anything. Is Mama home? Uh, she's still at Aunt Gertz. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Is something wrong, Aunt Bella? You can tell us. Well, do you think so? Do you think I can trust you? You're both still so young. You don't have to be old to be trusting. And you'd never tell Mama what I tell you? Because if she ever found out, she'd put me in the home. She would, for the rest of my life. I don't think she'd really do that. She just says that to scare you sometimes. Oh no, she would do it. Sometimes she'd take me in the trolley, and we'd go by the home and she'd say, that's where you'll live if you're not a good girl. You said she wouldn't do that because she was afraid to be alone. But she's not alone anymore. She's got you two here. Oh, oh, oh no. If you left, we'd go with you to the home. Knock it off, Artie. You don't have to tell us if you don't want to, Aunt Bella. We're your friends. I wish Eddie was here. Eddie would know what to do. Oh, we're Eddie's sons. That's almost the same thing. Oh, yes. That's true. All right. Come here. Sit down, both of you. This is our secret now, all right? A sacred secret. Say it with me, both of you. This, this is, is a sacred, sacred secret. secret. All right. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna be a wife and have lots and lots of children and live in a place of my own. Isn't that wonderful news? You're the only ones that know this. Jay, Artie, I'm gonna get married. Gee, that's swell, Aunt Bella. Have you found anybody yet? What do you mean, have I found anyone yet? Of course I have. I met him ten days ago at the movies, at the Orpheum Theater. I saw him there four times last week. You both went to the same movie four times? I didn't mind. And he has to because he works there. He's an usher. And he looks so wonderful in his uniform. He's an usher? And his name is Johnny. I always thought I'd marry someone named Johnny. <laughs> what a... Great guess. Well, anyway, we went out later for some coffee and for walks in the park and down near the river. And then today, just like in the movies, at exactly 2 o'clock or 2.15 or 2.30, he asked me to marry him. And I told him I would have to think it over, but the answer was yes. That was pretty quick, thinking it over. I know. I didn't want him to change his mind. Are you boys as happy about this as I am? Uh, oh, sure, sure. Um, how old is he? He's 30. Or, or maybe not. Maybe about 40. But he is so handsome and polite and quiet. I had to do all the talking. All he said was, would you marry me? Uh, was he ever married before? Oh, no. I, I would never want to marry somebody who's been married before. I want it to be the first time for both of us. If he has no children, how come he's not in the army? Well, he wanted to go, but they wouldn't take him because of his handicap. Uh, what handicap? He has a reading handicap. Uh, you mean he has bad eyes? No, he, he just has trouble learning things, the way I did. He went to a special school as a boy, the one near the home. He was there once, in the home, for about six months. He said it was terrible. So his parents took him out, and now he's much happier. I can see why I'm not anxious to tell Grandma. Uh, I mean, because it's so sudden-like. Well, he doesn't want to be an usher forever. He wants to open up his own restaurant. I would be the cook, and he would be the manager. I would love that more than anything in the whole world. Could he do that? Uh, manage a restaurant if he couldn't read the menus? Oh, well, I would do all that. I would help him. The only thing is, his parents are poor, and he doesn't make much money. And we'd need about $5,000 to open a restaurant, but I don't know if Mama would give it to me. Your mother is $5,000? Oh, more. Ten to 15000 I'm not supposed to tell anyone. Oh, uh, where does she keep it? In the bank? No, it's here in the house somewhere. She changes the hiding spot every year. No one knows she has it. Not Betty or Louie or Gert. No one. So, my problem is I have to get her to say yes to marrying Johnny, Yes to opening up the restaurant and moving away. And yes to the $5,000, but I don't think she's going to say yes, do you? Uh, I 
don't think she'll let you go to the movies much anymore. Well, she won't know if you don't tell her. You won't tell her, will you, Jay? Uh, I swear. Artie? She and I have very short conversations. I have to go inside now and think this out. I'm not good at thinking things out. I'm much better with my hands. But you're smart, both of you. Maybe you'll think it out for me. Please do. I would be grateful to you for the rest of my life. And I just thought of a name for the restaurant, too. La Bella Johnny. That's nice. Yeah. I just hope you can read it. <sighs> Wait till he meets Grandma. He'll be back at the home in a week. Fifteen thousand. Wow. You'd think she would have gave some of it to Pop. Uh, where would be the safest place to hide it? Where no one would think of looking. You're not really thinking of stealing it, are you? No, but what if we just borrowed it? I would love to send Pop an envelope with $9,000 in it. And who would he think sent it to him? God? He had an uncle in Poland who died. He left it in his will for Pop. You think the Germans will let some Jew in Poland send $9,000 to some Jew in Alabama? <laughs> Dear boys, traveling through the South has been a whole new education to me. Some people are very warm and polite and educated and very well spoken. And then there are some on the train who spit tobacco juice on the windows. A lot of people are having trouble with my New York accent. I didn't know I had one till I got here. I met a nice Jewish family in Atlanta and I couldn't understand them either. This woman, Mrs. Schneider, said to me, You'll come out to the synagogue this Shabbos and you'll meet some mighty fine folks. Well, I didn't want to embarrass her, so I just said, Show sure enough. <laughs> and she just looked at me and said, Who's show sure enough? <laughs> I guess it takes a while to learn the dialect. Love, Pop. Jay, hurry up. What if Grandma wakes up? This is crazy. Why would she hide money in the store? I looked everywhere. There's no money down there. God, I'm freezing. I was looking under the ice cream cartons. I think I got frostbite. Why would she hide money under ice cream? We use those cartons up every week. And not the boysenberry. Nobody ever looks under the boysenberry. It sits there for months. <sighs> I can't believe we're stealing money from our own grandmother. Who's that? <laughs> Get that light out of my face and go back to sleep, kid. Uh, there's nothing to steal here, mister. I swear. Is that you, Jay? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah? Uh, who are you? It's Uncle Louie. Uncle Louie? <laughs> no kidding. Artie, it's Uncle Louie. Oh, Uncle Louie? Uh, really? Uh, hi, Uncle Louie. Is that Artie? Yeah, it's Artie. Uh, hi, Uncle Louie. Oh, oh, just a second. Wait a second. Eh. Eh. 
Well, look at that. A couple of big guys now, ain't you? Hey, you don't come around for a while, you grow up on me. Ha! Yeah, here. Come here. Come on. I want a hug. That's right, move it. Move it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> picture your mother. A oh, pretty woman, your mother. And you. Oh, you look just like a little bull terrier. <laughs> Is that what you are? A bull terrier? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> who, uh, watch it. <laughs> hey, who, are you middleweight now or what? Who's been beefing you up, huh? Aunt Bella. She's a good cook. A uh, couple of midnight trips down to the ice cream freezer, huh? <laughs> Digging into the boysenberry with your flashlight. That, that's breaking and entering, kid. Two to five years. You saw me? Yeah, I've been down there since Ma closed the store. Sitting in the dark? Yeah, I was waiting for her to go to sleep. I went in no mood for no long conversations. Uh, I just took a free full, that's all. Uh, I love boysenberry. Big mistake, kid. Ma reads fingerprints. She'll nail you in the morning. Uh, are you serious? Oh, get out of here. What are you, a couple of pushovers? Yeah, just like your old man. Well, you think your papa and I didn't do that when we were kids? Oh, that was the beauty part. We never took nothing during the day. On ice cream, store full of candy, anything we wanted. Never took nothing. But as soon as Ma let her braids down and turned out the lights, we'd be down there lapping up the cream and meowing like cats. <laughs> Ain't that the way? Yeah, it's only fun when there's a chance of getting caught. <laughs> nothing sweeter than danger, right, boys? I guess so. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> I didn't know Pop was like that. Yeah, well, he wasn't no good at it anyway. <laughs> Ma always knew what was going on. I mean, she could tell if there was salt missing from a pretzel. But she wouldn't say nothing. She'd just come up from the store with the milk, sit down for breakfast, knowing there was two scoops of everything missing. And she'd just stare at you. Right into your eyeballs. Pupil to pupil. Never blinking. Those eyes were like two district attorneys. Eddie couldn't handle the pressure. He'd always crack. Tears would start rolling down his face like a wet confession. Then whack! You get that German right hand across the top of his head. But not me. I just stared right back at her. Till those eyelids must have weighed ten pounds each. And she'd turn away from me down for the count. <laughs> yeah. Ma and I used to love to put on the gloves and go the distance. <laughs> Nobody told us you were coming over tonight. Nobody knew. It was a surprise even for me. I, I, I'm gonna stay here a couple of days, maybe a week. Uh, they're painting my apartment. <clears throat> you didn't know they were going to paint your apartment? Why, they just found the right color paint tonight. It's, it's hard to find with the war on, you know. <clears throat> so, you, uh, you boys been uh, keeping your noses out of trouble? Huh? Uh, how's Pop? Ma says he's uh, in the junk business or something. Is that right, Artie? Huh? Um, uh, it's selling scrap iron or something. Is that it? Huh? What's the matter with you? Oh, this. This. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm holding it for a friend. This policeman I know, he went on vacation. He didn't want to lose it. They have to pay for it if they lose it. Plus, plus. <laughs> Ladies love it. You dance with them close, it gives them a thrill. <laughs> uh, is it loaded? Do you hope not? If it goes off, I'll have to become a ballerina. <laughs> oh. Hey, your, uh, your pop ever send you some loose change now and then, eh? Oh, yeah, whenever you can. Yeah, like never, right? Yeah, you think I don't know what's going on? The sharks are putting the bite on it. You should have come to me. There's lots of ways to borrow money. That's what your pop don't understand. Sometimes being on the up and up just gets you down and down. You know what I mean, Jay? Yeah. Uh, I never knew a policeman could lend his gun to someone. <sighs> you got a smart brother there, Artie. You're right, Jay. It's my gun. I'm uh, a bodyguard for a prominent and distinguished political figure. It's like an FBI guy, but uh, they call it something else. A uh, henchman? Well, who's been telling you stories like that, Jay? Uh, no, I swear. You don't repeat that word again to anyone, you understand? I didn't mean to say it. I was thinking of Hunchback. Oh, 
couple of kidders, huh? Don't pull my leg out, Hardy. It might come off in your hands. All right, hey, hey. So, we got some business to discuss. <clears throat> you boys got any problem with making a little after-school money? You mean a job? I've been trying, but Grandma wants us in the store after school to help pay with our expenses. Right, well, how about this? Why don't you come work for me? Hmm? Five dollars a week, split down the middle. Cash on the barrel. But first, first, you, you, you gotta guess what number I'm thinking of. You're making a mistake, the deal's off. Go on, take a guess. Uh, three. Seven. Thirty-seven, right, good guess, well done. All right, you're on Uncle Louie's payroll, there you go. All right, Artie, can you drive a car? Me? I'm only 13 and a half. Yeah, that's too bad. I need someone who can drive a car. I'm a pretty good roller skater. Well, that's good, kid, because I'm spinning your wheels. <laughs> hey, hey, don't pull your leg now, huh? <laughs> Wake up and live, kid. It's a fast world out there. <laughs> uh, Uncle Louie, mm. this $5 bill, it has your picture on it. <laughs> Ain't so fast either. Check your pocket, Artie. It's five dollars! A real one! How'd you do that? These fingers were touched by greatness. I could have been a concert violinist, but the, the handkerchief kept falling off my neck. Uh, what do we have to do for the money? Nothing. Like if those, anyone comes around asking questions about me, you don't know nothing, you ain't heard nothing, you ain't seen nothing. You think you can handle that? There were two guys here the other day looking for you. Yeah? What'd they look like? One had a, uh, a broken nose, and the other had... A Betty Grable tie. Right. And Hollywood Harry. And he's got the stars hand-painted on the silk. So, if those two come around asking for me again, what do you tell them? Nothing. Nothing. Smart boys. Look in Jay's pocket, Artie. Another five dollars! I could have played Carnegie Hall. We wouldn't be doing anything wrong, would we? Hey, you're my brother's kids. You think I'm going to get you involved in something stupid? Don't be stupid. It, it's just a couple of guys don't like me, because uh, yeah, I've been seeing this lady I, I shouldn't have been seeing. It's a, it's a minor neighborhood thing. Yeah. All right, it's late. I'm going to wash up. I'll bunk here tonight with you, all right? Sure, there's plenty of room. Oh, oh, one more thing. Don't touch this. It's got all my valuables in it. My draft card, my, my, my driver's license, my good cufflinks. You know, I think I'll put it somewhere you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Oh, oh, Artie, Artie, uh, check and see if there's anything in your pajama bottoms. No, there's nothing there. Well, don't worry. You're young yet. <laughs> having a James Cagney movie in your own house. We're not taking that money. I'm not painting his apartment at midnight. He's a bag man, and he's got a bag and a gun. And Pop wouldn't want us to get paid for saying nothing to some Hollywood Harry in a Betty Grable tie. Forget it. Jay, Artie, have you thought of anything yet about how I should tell Mama about you-know-who? Gee, no, we've been very busy ourselves. Oh, sure, I understand. But if you do think of something, I'm going to give you each a dollar. I know you could use it. I'll let you get back to sleep. I was having such a good dream, I'm going to go back and finish it. You know, we can make a pretty great living just from this family. You always gotta go to the bathroom? Uh, no, why? I don't like anybody getting up when I'm sleeping. Uh, sure. Uh, how late do you sleep? Till I see something I don't like. Yeah. It's good to be home. In my own bed. <laughs> Is this where you slept? Yeah, me and Eddie. Yeah, and Gert slept with Bella. And, and Ma slept with her cane. <sighs> Nothing like family, boys. One place in the world you're safe, it's with your family, right? Right. 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 So, that's something 
unexpected happens. See you two in the morning, pals. Sleep tight. Jay. What? I have to go to the bathroom. Save it. <laughs> Dear boys, the one thing that keeps me going is knowing you're with my family. Thank God you're in good hands. Love, Pop. Sorry I haven't kept up my letter writing, but the truth was that I was in the hospital for a few days. Oh, nothing to worry about. My doctor said it was just exhaustion. I remember when I was a boy, if I was sick, my mother used to give me the worst tasting German mustard soup. God, how I hated it. Luckily, they don't serve it in Mississippi. I'll write soon. Love, Pop. You got it real rough. Reading comic books, missing school. I wish I had a fever. Here, drink this. What is it? <laughs> Grandma made you soup. <sighs> Forget it. I'm not drinking it. Don't start with her, Artie. She's in a rotten mood today. You mean all those other days she was in a good mood? <laughs> Just drink it. Where's Uncle Louie? Taking a nap in Aunt Bella's room. Well, when he gets out, tell me about a phone call this morning. One of the guys from the Studebaker? But you said you don't know nothing, right? Right, and he said, you tell Uncle Louie that Friday night the dance is over. What dance? The Goodbye Louie dance. You mean he's double-crossing the mob? You got it. Wow. You think they'll kill him? Uh, maybe all three of us. We work for him, don't we? It takes 20 minutes to bring up soup. I've got one sweeper not sweeping downstairs. I don't need two. Well, I was just going. And don't let the kid sit on the stool all day. One goes to buy a malted and the other two steal pretzels. They steal, you pay for it. Sure, that's only fair. What was that? Uh, I said yes, I hear. Mm, he's fresh to me, that one. Oh, enough, enough lying around. Get up already. I'm freezing, and I'm burning up with fever. You can feel my head. Oh, you lay in bed, you get fever. You, you get up, you walk around the fever, look for somebody else. The ouch, the ouch. Uh, my mother always kept me in bed when I had a fever. You're not in your mother's house no more. You, you sit there and you, you do your homework. Oh, pst, no funny books. And you finish that soup, all of it. I tried. I can't get it down. Well, if you eat it quickly, you won't taste it. I would taste this if I didn't have a tongue. You, you listen to me. You're not fresh yet like the other one, but I see it coming. You stay here. You don't lay in bed two weeks. No, no. You get over there. You get better quick. You get dressed. You go downstairs and you, you wash the suit about and, and you sweep up the store. I, and if I, I did not take care of you. But if I take care of you, you're going to do what I tell you to do. You, you, you look at me when I talk to you. You look at me. Sit down. Listen to me. You're not going to win this argument. Do you understand? Yes. Then you put that soup in your mouth right now or I do it for you. <laughs> you could drown me like that. Why are you so mean to me? I'm your own grandson. That's right. And what am I? 
what do you mean? What am I? Am I a nobody? No, you're my grandmother. Then where's the respect? The respect I never got from you or your family since the day you were born. You're just mad at my mother, and you're taking it out on me. You don't care about your rotten soup or making me get better. You just want me to be miserable because somebody made you miserable in Germany. Even Pop said it. Well, that's not my fault. Take it out on Hitler, not on me. And if you were a boy in Germany, you would be dead by now. That's right. Maybe I would be. And if I ate this soup, I would be just as dead. Would that make you happy then, Grandma? You want to be happy? Watch. Okay? Then you can stand there and watch me die. No, you won't die. You'll be better this afternoon. It's not important that you hate me, Arthur. It's only important that you would live. That's something I could never teach your father. You ever hear of General Rommel? Who? General Erwin Rommel. German tank commander. Right now, he's rolling across Egypt, cutting through half the British army. Tough as they come. But if Mama wanted him to eat the soup, he would eat the soup. <laughs> Did you eat it when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. I thought you weren't afraid of her. I wasn't. That's how I proved it to her. I hated that soup worse than you. But I would drink three bowls of it and ask for more. She knew she couldn't win with me. I wish I was as tough as you. Hey, you getting there? Hey, you took her on. That took guts, kid. That took moxie. What's moxie? <laughs> That's moxie, kid. Where's JJ? Downstairs, carting the pretzels. Oh. Uncle Louie? Hmm? There was a telephone call for you. For me? One of the guys from the Studebaker. Jay took it. He told them he never heard of you. But he left a message, right? Yeah. They said, you tell Uncle Louie that Friday night, the dance is over. <laughs> yeah. Well, that don't mean nothing. It's, uh, a couple of Bronx boys like to talk tough is all. Yeah. What's the matter? Grandma got you down? I think she loves doing it. Hey, let me tell you something. Guess who hates living here more than you? The old lady with the cane. That's right. Grandma hates running the store. She hates living in Yonkers. You know how many friends she's made in the 30 years she's been here? Zippo. She doesn't exactly put herself out with people. <laughs> yeah. I never said she was a lot of laughs. Tell you the truth, I don't like her much myself. She knows it. Why should I? She used to lock me in the closet for breaking a dish. A ten cent dish. I'd get two, maybe three hours in the closet. And if I cried, I'd get another hour. No light. No water. Just enough air to breathe. That's when I learned not to cry. And after a few times in the closet, I toughened up. But I also never broke another dish. <laughs> No. No, I didn't like her, but I respected her. Hell of a teacher Ma was. Wouldn't it have been easier if she bought paper plates? Then where's the lesson? There's no respect for paper plates. Hear me out. She was no harder on us than she was on herself. When she was 12 years old, her old man takes her to a political rally in Berlin. Cops break it up with sticks on horseback. Somebody throws a rock, and the cops bash in her old man's head. A horse goes down, crushes Ma's foot. Nobody ever fixed it. It hurts every day of her life. I never once seen her take even an aspirin. She could have had an operation, but she used the money she saved to come to this country with her husband and her six kids. <laughs> That's Moxie, kid. Did she ever put my father in the closet? <laughs> Not a chance. She'd open up the closet door and he'd tie himself to the radiator, even if it was hot. <laughs> nah, 
Nah, he was too afraid to go up against her. He was careful. Never broke nothing. Except maybe himself. Didn't you want to ever want to run away? I did. Twelve times. Still a record in Yonkers. <laughs> the last time she wouldn't take me back. <clears throat> Told a policeman she didn't know me. I had nowhere to go, so, uh... I lived under the house with a couple of cats for two weeks. It's a dead of winter. The bella would come down, bring me sandwiches, a blanket, a couple of candles, till Ma Carter and locked her in the closet overnight. But Bella don't always understand anything, so she thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> or else she thought it was the safest place to be. Now, Gert! Gert! Gert was more scared than your old man. Gert used to talk in his sleep. One night, Ma hears her saying things she don't like. So Gert doesn't get supper all week. Not until she learns to, uh, to sleep holding her breath. I don't blame you for hating her. What? Hey, I never said hate. I said I didn't like her. It's different. How you feeling? <clears throat> I think my fever's gone. Yeah, it's lousy soup, but it works. And uh, when Jay comes back up, uh, you tell him to bring me some coffee and a donut, right? Eh? I'll be in the shower. I'm gonna wash up before I go. You're leaving? When? Tonight. No point waiting till the dance is over. <laughs> Uncle Louie? Hmm? Are you in trouble? Adi. I was never not in trouble. <laughs> I hate her. I hate her guts. No wonder Mom never wanted us to come here. What'd she do? She charged me for three pretzels. Three pretzels that some kids stole while she was downstairs, and I was upstairs with your soup. She says, no, there were 12 pretzels in the glass when I went upstairs, and nine pretzels when I came down. Uh, not even Sherlock Holmes would notice that. Two sets of pretzels would be two. That's only six cents! Oh, is that all it is? Then you pay it. Is Uncle Louie still sleeping? He's taking a shower. He's leaving tonight. Leaving? I have to talk to him. About what? It's private business. Jay, you don't have any business. All you got is a job that costs you six cents a day. <laughs> Come on, tell me, Jay. I'll find out sooner or later. I'm gonna ask Uncle Louie to take me with him. What? Will you be quiet? Are you crazy? Go with Uncle Louie? I have to make money. Money, get a good job somewhere. Uh, but I can't leave here with minus six cents in my pocket. Uncle Louie's my ticket out. Running away. That's all Pop has to hear. Well, maybe we just can't count on Pop anymore. Maybe I can take care of him better than he's taking care of us. Doing what? Maybe Uncle Louie can teach me a few things. Oh, great. To become what? A junior bag man? The pocketbook kid? If Uncle Louie says yes, you can't stop me. Then take me with you. Take you? You're only a kid. Besides, she doesn't treat you the way she treats me. I'm afraid of her, Jay. A horse fell on her when she was a kid, and she hasn't taken an aspirin yet. <laughs> Look, if I can get set up somewhere with a good paying job, I'll send for you. You promise? I swear on Mama's grave. Arthur and Jakob, the gangster. I can't believe it. Oh, here you are. Mama sent me to look for you. She didn't know where you were for 20 minutes. I'll be right down. I just have to ask Uncle Louie something. He's in the shower. Are you feeling better, Artie? Yeah. Well, I'm glad because we're having company tonight. My sister Gertrude, remember her? Sort of. Well, she hasn't been well. She doesn't breathe right. I think it's because she used to sleep with her head inside the pillow. Inside? Tonight's the night? Tonight's what night? The night that I talked to Mama about you know what? Just the two of you? Oh no, with Aunt Gertrude and Uncle Louie here, and you and Artie. I wouldn't dare talk to Mama without the family here to back me up. You are gonna back me up, aren't you? You promised. It's not gonna go very late, is it? Well, not if everyone backs me up. You're not going any place, are you? Uh, me? <laughs> no, where would I be going? 
My heart hasn't stopped pounding all day. I'm so nervous I can't stop eating. I ate three pretzels before and I never eat pretzels. You ate the pretzels? If you, any, if you eat anything else, you just tell grandma first. Oh, she knows I ate the pretzels. She even said, why are, you so, why are you eating so much? You nervous about something? I better get back downstairs. You too, Jay. I don't want to do anything to upset mama before tonight. And Artie, if you want more soup, you just let me know. Grandma's crazy, Artie. Where'd that horse fall? On her head? Oh, perfect timing, Jay. Hey, where's my coffee and donut? Oh, I forgot to tell him. So tell him. Uncle Louie wanted some coffee and a donut. Coming right up. Well, would you tell Grandma it's for you? Because donuts are expensive. <laughs> What's she do? <laughs> Charging you for missing donuts? No, pretzels. How do you know? It's a favorite trick. I once owed a two dollars for a missing bag of pistachio nuts. One minute it was on the counter, and the next it was gone. She blamed me, till I found them in her drawer. <laughs> she says to me, You're responsible if someone steals from this store, even me! Ah! <laughs> hey, Adi, get my shirt, will you? It's on the bed. Uh, did you pair the two dollars? No, I stole them back that night. But I got the lesson. You've learned a lot in your life, haven't you, Uncle Louie? And nobody takes me pistachios no more. I can see. I, I could learn a lot from you, I bet. Yeah, I could write a book. <laughs> you wouldn't have to write. I mean, if someone just hung around watching, they'd pick up on a lot, don't you think? A lot of what? A lot of anything. I don't think so. I don't like nobody hanging around watching me. Uncle Louie, I have an important question to ask you. Don't ask questions, kid. That's probably the best thing I can teach you. Never ask questions. I'm sorry. I'll just tell you then. I, I want to leave here. Uh, tonight. Uh, I've made up my mind. I'm definitely going. Where are you going to go? As far away as I can get. <laughs> How far is that? Five dollars far? Ten dollars far? A dozen pretzels far? No, just a pair of shoes far. Until they wear out. Then what? You better have a better set transportation than a pair of shoes. I never did this before. That's why I'm asking for your advice. You gotta make your grandma very unhappy. No, I won't. Besides, they never stopped you. Uncle Lou, would you like me to shine your shoes? Hey, one guy work on me at a time, okay? Why you wanna go, Jay? It's cold out there. It's lonely out there. It's dangerous out there. I know that, but there's money out there. Oh, I see. This is about getting rich fast, huh? Uh, not for me, for Pop. Oh, isn't that nice? Like Robin Hood, huh? I don't want to rob people. No? Who do you want to rob? No one. Well, it kind of rules out getting rich fast. Some people do it. Yeah? How? You'll think this is a question. Then don't ask it. I can't help you, kid. I got nothing to teach you and nothing I want to teach you. Is that what you think I do? Rob banks? Rob grocery stores? Liquor stores? Little old ladies in the park? Is that who you think I am? And no, I don't think so. Oh, you don't think so? That's supposed to be a compliment? You don't want to know what I do? I'm a businessman. A freelance money manager. A 24-hour-a-day investment advisor. Hey, you want to know been asking that all day. Uh, now I'm telling you. The school's out. You graduated. Now find the girl and go to your prom. Thank you. Uh, I just have one minor question to ask you. <laughs> you got balls. Do you know you got balls? I'm aware of them, yes. <laughs> I love your brother. He reminds me of me. All right. What's your question? Are there any openings in your business? You got balls, but I think they're in your head. I'll do anything, and I won't ask any questions. There are no openings. The reason there are no openings is because there's no business no more. I'm relocating. A one-man operation out of town. That's the end of this conversation. As far as I'm concerned, this conversation is deceased. Uh, take me with you. I'll get off wherever you want me to, but please take me with you tonight. Are you deaf or something? Is he deaf? Doesn't he hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? 
I caught most of it, yeah. Take you with me? What for? Your company? Your company's starting to pester me already. What do I need you for? What can you do for me, eh? I can carry a little black satchel. You interested in my little black satchel? Uh, no, I just thought... No. Well, you want to carry it. Why? Does it look heavy to you? You think I got a broken arm? I can't carry a little bag like that? Uh, no. No? You must have some other interest in it then. You've been fooling around with this bag? Uh, I swear, no. No? But you're curious about it. Why? You want to know how much it weighs or something? Pick it up. Go on, Jay. Pick it up. I don't want to pick it up. Pick it up, Jay. It won't bite you. You ain't going to be happy till you pick it up. So pick it up. I really don't want to. Come on, Jay. Please, pick it up. Stay out of this. No, 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 no. Artie, come here. Me? That's right. You're Artie. I want you to come over here and pick up this bag. Uh, Jay's closer. Jay is not interested. I want you to do it. All right, Adi. Pick it up. I don't know why, but I think I'm gonna cry. Just pick it up, Adi. All right. Is it heavy? No. Is it light? No. So what is it? Medium. Okay. So it's medium. So what do you think's in there? Money? Fives and tens and twenties and hundreds all stuck together with rubber bands or what? I said what? I don't know. You don't know. Well, maybe you better open the bag and take a look, huh? Why don't you do that, Artie? Why don't you open up the bag and take a look, huh? Please, Uncle Louie. No, I'm only going to ask you one more time because I'm running out of patience. Open the bag! Don't do it, Artie. Leave him alone, Uncle Louie. You want the bag open? Do it yourself. Uh, maybe don't rob banks or grocery stores or little old woman. You're worse than that. You're a bully. You pick on a couple of kids, your own nephews. You make fun of my father because he cried and was afraid of Grandma. <laughs> well, everyone in Yonkers is afraid of Grandma. And let me tell you something else about my father. At least he's doing something in this war. He's sick and he's tired, but he's out there selling iron to make ships and tanks and cannons. And I'm proud of him. What are you doing? Hiding in your mother's apartment, scaring little kids, and acting like Humphrey Bogart. Oh, well, you're no Humphrey Bogart. And let me tell you something else. Uh, no. That's all. <laughs> That was thrilling. That was beautiful. I got tears in my eyes. Yeah, you got bigger balls than I gave you credit for, Jay. You, you got a couple of steel basketballs down there. You know what you got, Jay? You got Moxie. What's Moxie? Tell him, Artie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's Moxie. Yeah. Father's a lucky man, let me tell you. That's why I don't think you should come with me. Stay here. Take care of Artie and Mama and Bella. Maybe someday you'll be proud of your old Uncle Louie, too. And don't worry what was in the bag. It, it's laundry. Dirty laundry, boys. That's all. Are you a banker? Is this your lunch hour? But this is not a bank. Get downstairs and help Bella close up the store. And Arthur, get dressed. We have company tonight. Oh, I, I don't think I can stay, Ma. I didn't ask you to. Bella asked you to. You're staying. You have something else to tell me? No? Then get downstairs. And you and I have something else to talk about later. Uh, about what? About a jar of pistachio nuts that have gone missing. That's about what. 
You're getting careless, Louis. You left the money on my dresser this morning. Louis never careless. It's for you. I had a good week. A good week for you is a bad week for someone else. What? Keep your profits, Louis. It's just a hundred bucks, Ma. Hey, happy birthday. It's tomorrow, right? Don't pay me for being born. I've been paid enough. And take it for putting me up. You know how I hate hotels. I don't take from you. Not what you have to give. You were always the strongest survivor. Live at any cost, I taught you, yes. Not when someone else has to pay the price. Keep your filthy money, Louis. You're terrific, Ma. 100% steel. Finest grade made. Poor Eddie's out there searching for scrap iron. The chump doesn't know he's got a whole battleship right here. Now, you can't scare me. You can't bring me down, Ma. I'm too tough. You taught me good. And whatever else I've accomplished in this life, just remember, you're my partner. Mwah! Dear Mama, the boys tell me you're getting along just fine. I told you they'd be no trouble. Enclosed, I'm sending $25 to cover their food and Artie's medicine. Jakob tells me some kids have been stealing pretzels and pistachio nuts. It's amazing that hasn't changed in almost 30 years. Love, Eddie. Would anyone like more coffee? Mama, Gert, <laughs> strudel with it. No. Jay, go and get Aunt Gert more coffee, but no strudel. Louie, wouldn't you like another piece? Uh, I had enough, Bella. But you always have two pieces. One piece of strudel is enough tonight, OK? Don't help me with the chairs, anyone. I know just how I want it to be. Uh, listen, uh, Mama, I got to run along. I'll call you next week. Gert. It's been great seeing you, sweetheart. You look terrific. You're going to sit here, Louie. Uh, this is your place. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bella. I got to go. It, it was a top-notch dinner. No kidding. Mm. Jay, uh, it'll work out. Trust me. Where's Artie? I'm leaving. Uh, no, you can't go yet, Louie. You promised. Well, I promised I'd stay for dinner. I stayed for dinner. How many dinners do you want me to stay for? Uh, but the family hasn't had a talk yet. We did. We talked all through dinner. I didn't have a chance to swallow nothing. I'm all talked out, Bella. There's still something that hasn't been talked about. It wasn't something that could be talked about at dinner. You sit here. This is your place. Well, I told you I had to go after coffee. I had my coffee. I had my strudel. I had my dinner. I have to go, Bella. Mama, uh, Gert, uh, tell him to stay. Louis, you can't go yet. You have to be here. The whole family has to be here. Mama, tell him. You're getting excited, Bella. I'm not getting excited, I promise. I'm fine, Mama, just ask Louie to stay. I'll get the boys in. He'll stay, Bella. Jay, Artie, everybody inside. Forget the dishes, we'll do them later. Here's your coffee, Aunt Gert. Oh, thank you. Jay, Artie, you sit on the sofa with Aunt Gert. Mama, you stay there. I'll sit here, and Louie, you sit in the chair. Yeah, I've been sitting all night, Bella. I can stand up, OK? Uh, but it would be so much better if you were sitting, Louie. I, I pictured everybody sitting. Well, I don't want to sit. Change the picture. Picture everybody sitting and me standing, all right? Louie, can't you just sit for a few minutes until Bella tells us what it is? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Here. How's this? Is, this? is this how you pictured it? No. I pictured you sitting in the chair I picked out. Bella, it's very important that I leave here soon tonight. Very important. Look, I don't want to upset you, sweetheart, but I, I can't spend all night getting the seating arrangements right, okay? So I'm going to stand here, I'm going to listen, then I'm going to go. I pictured everybody sitting. Oh. 
Jesus. Louie, stop arguing with her and sit down for God's sake before <laughs> she gets into one of her thoughts again. Louie, sit. Gertrude, stop it. Louie, sit. Louie, stand. Louie, eat. You don't stand me no more, Ma. Maybe everybody else here, but not me. You want to stand? Louie, sit down. All right. Are we all seated now? Yes, we're all seated. You want to take a picture of what you picture, Bella? Stop it, Louie. Now, who wants to start? <laughs> who wants to start? Start what? Uh, Mama, I ain't got time for this. Maybe when I was 12 years old, but not tonight. It's one of her games. Her crazy games, for Christ's sake. Is this a game, Bella? Are you just playing? <laughs> It's not a game. It's very important, except I don't know how to start to say it, so someone else has to help me start first. You got something important to say? You want us to start? Girl, you understand it better than I do. When you figure out what this is about, you let me know, okay? All right. Aunt Bella, have you... Uh, have you been going to the movies lately, Aunt Bella? What? Thank you, Jay. Yes. I have been going to the movies a lot lately. Three times last week. Really? Uh, did you see anything good? Oh, yes. I saw a picture with William Holden and Jean Arthur. I, I, I really liked it. That's why I saw it three times. This is what I stayed for dinner for? This is what I had to be in the right seat to listen to? Jean Arthur, William Holden, are they in the picture you pictured? Is that what this is about, Bella? Is this all about what movies <laughs> you went to last week? No, but I'm getting to it. Ask me more questions, Jay. You're good at this. Ah, uh, let's see. Did you go alone? Oh, yes. I always go alone. But it's interesting you should ask me that because I met a friend there. You can ask me questions too, Gert. I don't know what kind of questions to ask you. Ask her who the friend was. Who was the friend? Well, his name is Johnny. I always see him there because he's the head usher. He's very nice. So you just saw him in the theater? Well, once or twice we went out for coffee and for walks in the park. You went to the park with this guy? Just to talk. You have to sit down if you're going to ask me questions, Louie. Now whose turn is it? This is when you came home at 11 o'clock. Maybe. Uh, I think so. Was that it? What did you do until 11 o'clock? <laughs> well, we walked and talked and got to know each other. And he doesn't want to be an usher forever. One day, he wants to open up his own restaurant. His own restaurant? And he's an usher? What is he, 15, 16? No, he's 40. And he wants to open up the restaurant with me. Why with you? Uh, b because I can do all the cooking and write out the menus and, and keep the books. And, and what would he do? He would be the manager. Well, if he's the manager, why doesn't he write out the menus and keep the books? Well, because he has a... a reading handicap. A what? A, a reading handicap. Oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. What do you mean? This guy can't read? You're not supposed to get out of your chair. That's not how I pictured it. Yeah, well, now I'm getting my own picture. This guy's what, illiterate? He, he can read a little. It's a little? His name? This guy's either pulling your leg or he's after something. Is he after something, Bella? Maybe this isn't a good time to talk about it. No, no, this is the perfect time to talk about it. What is this guy after, huh? Has he touched you? Has he fooled around with you? No, he is not that kind of person. Well, what kind of person is he? He's 40 years old, he takes you to the park, he wants to open a restaurant, he doesn't read or write. How are you going to open a restaurant? Who's going to put up the money, huh? It'll only cost $5,000. <laughs> $5,000? Why not $5 million? Uh, who's got the five grand? Him? I don't think so. He, he doesn't have any money. Oh, well, that's too bad. So who does that leave? Tony. 
yell at me, Louie? I'm not yelling at you. I'm asking you a question. Who does that leave to put up the $5,000? This is too terrible. Mama, please tell them to stop this awful thing. Who does that leave, Bella? I'll get the money somewhere. Where is somewhere? There is no somewhere. Wait, you want Mama to sell the store? Is that what this guy's asking? He didn't ask me anything. Well, he's either very smart or very dangerous. It doesn't sound too smart to me. So that just leaves dangerous. He's not dangerous. Well, how do you know? Because they don't take you at the home if you're dangerous. <gasps> the home? Oh, my God. I don't understand this. Could somebody please explain all this to me? Bella, honey, this man sounds very troubled. Is he living at the home now? No, with his parents. He didn't like the home. They weren't very nice to him there. It is not a nice place, Mama. Uh, uh, Bella, sweetheart, it, don't go to that movie no more. Huh? Don't see that fella no more. I mean, he may be very nice, but sounds like he's got a lot of wacky ideas. You know what I mean, sweetheart? You promised you would support me. Jay, Artie, you said he would back me up. You promised. Back you up? Back you up with what? The restaurant? The money? Is that what this guy's after? He wants more than that. What could possibly be more than that? And me. He wants me. He wants to marry me. And I want to marry him. I want to have his children. I want my own babies. Jesus Christ. This, that's enough. No, I don't want to hear about this no more. You think I can't have healthy babies, Mama? Well, I can. I'm as strong as an ox. I worked in that store at taking care of you by myself since I'm 12 years old. That's how strong I am. Like steel, Mama. Isn't that how we're supposed to be? But my babies won't die because I'll love them and I'll take care of them. And they won't be sick like me or Bert or weak like Eddie and Louie. My babies will be happier than we were because I'll teach them to be happy. Not to grow up and run away or never visit when they're older or not be able to breathe because they're so frightened and never, ever to spend their lives rubbing my back and legs because you never had anyone around who loved you enough to want to touch you because you made it so clear that you never wanted to be touched with love. Do you know what it's like to touch steel, Mama? It's hard and cold. And I want to be warm and soft with my babies. Let me have my babies, Mama, because I have to love somebody. I have to love someone who's gonna love me back before I die. Give me my babies, Mama. And I promise, you'll never have to worry about being alone because you'll have us, me and my husband and my babies. Louie, tell her how wonderful that would be. Gert, wouldn't that make her happy? Mama, please say yes. I need you to say yes, please. Dear Pop, things are really bad here. Really, really bad. I wish you were here, even just for a weekend. Last night, I cried for you and for Mom.
but Jay was afraid Grandma would hear, so he stuck a sock in my mouth. I miss you and love you. Your son, Artie. Not Arthur. Where do you think Aunt Bella could be? Missing for two nights out there in the city? I'm worried. Maybe Uncle Louie took her with him. <laughs> if he didn't take me, you think he's gonna take Aunt Bella and her 40 year old usher from the home? Huh? <laughs> I'm going now. I think Mama feels better since. <laughs> No idea where she is? Yes! She's at my house! Your house? Shh! She doesn't want Mama to know! You mean she's been there all the time? Is she ever coming back? She's meeting with that man today. We'll know soon. Do you think they'll get married? Who knows? She's been crying for... <laughs> two days now! I'm sorry! It's hard for me to talk! Uh, isn't there anything the doctors can do about that, Anchor? I don't have it that much. It, it's mostly... <laughs> when I come here. Oh. Now, you'll always take care of a grandma now. If Bella doesn't come back, you're all she has. I know. If you run into trouble, do you have my number? I don't think so. It's Westchester 7, <laughs> four, six, six, nine. What? Westchester 7, <laughs> four, I have six. it, I have it. Goodbye, darlings. Take care. I love you. Could be worse. Suppose we were left with her instead? <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, it's funny. But I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for this whole family. Even Grandma, don't you? Oh, well, I do. And you should, too. Uh, hello, Grandma. Uh, how are you feeling? Is there anything we can get you? What are you doing in the house on a Sunday? Why don't you go for a walk or something? Oh, we thought we'd keep you company. I don't need to be kept company. You want the radio on, Grandma? They have Sunday news on today. I've had enough news already this week. Uh, things are getting better in North Africa. They captured 20,000 Germans this month. 20,000 Germans. Good. That's good news. Uh, how's your father? Uh, he's feeling better. He thinks he can be home for good in about eight months. Eight months? You'll be glad to go home, yeah? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, sort of. Uh, but we'll still come out and visit you, Grandma. Maybe I won't be here. Maybe I'll sell the store. Sell the store? Uh, what would you do without the store? Oh, don't worry about your Grandma. Your Grandma knows how to take care of herself, believe me. Oh, come on outside, you took too much. Are you sure you don't mind being alone? Oh, maybe this is the first Sunday I'll get some rest. Aunt Bella! Are you all right? Go on already, you two. I don't want to have to tell you again. Hello, Mama. Would you like some tea? It's chilly in here. I, I bought a coffee cake at Grossman's. It's still warm. It's all right if you don't want to talk to me, Mama. I know you must be very angry with me. Are you home for good or is this just a visit? I don't know. I thought I'd come back and talk to you about it. Like you talked to me the night you left, without a word. You were the one who didn't talk, Mama. You never gave me a chance to say anything. I heard what you had to say. I didn't have to hear no more. 
Look, I'm not crying. I know you're very angry with me, but I'm not crying. And it's not because I'm afraid to cry. It's because I don't have any more tears left in me. I feel sort of empty inside, like you feel all the time. How would you know how I feel? You think I don't know anything, do you, Mama? You think I'm stupid, don't you? No, you're not stupid. Then what? Am I crazy? Do you think I'm crazy, Mama? Don't use that word to me. Why not? Are you afraid of it? If that's what I am, then don't be afraid to say it. Because if I'm crazy, I should be in the home, shouldn't I? But then you'd be alone and you wouldn't like that. Is that why you don't use that word, Mama? You want to know what you are, Bella? A child. That's what the doctors told me. You're not crazy. You're not stupid. A child. You're not sick. You don't need doctors. You don't need to live in the home. This is where you live. Where you can be watched and taken care of. You'll always be a child, Bella. And in this world, where there's so much hatred and sickness and death, but nobody can find any peace. Now maybe you'd better off. Stay a child, Bella. Be glad that that's what God made you. Then why did he make me look like a woman? and feel like a woman inside of me and want all the things a woman should have. Is that what I should thank him for? Why did he do that, Mama, when I can do everything but think like a woman? I know I get confused sometimes and frightened, but if I'm a child, why can't I be happy like a child? Why can't I be satisfied with dolls instead of babies? I'm, I'm not so smart I can answer such things. But I am smart, Mama. Maybe only as smart as a child, but some children are smarter than grown-ups. And some grown-ups I've seen are very stupid and very mean. You don't have responsibilities, Bella, and responsibilities is what makes meanness. I don't want to be your responsibility. Then maybe you won't be so mean to me. Then who will be responsible for you, yourself? That man you ran away with, who wants other things from you? He wants money and God knows what other things, things you would never know about. No, stay, stay the way you are, Bella, because you don't know what such feelings will do to you. Yes, I do, Mama. I know what other things you're talking about. I know because they happened to me, Mama. They happened to me because I wanted them to happen. You angry with me? You, you don't know what you're saying, Bella. Do you mean am I telling you the truth? Yes. I know what the truth is. Only I've been afraid to tell you for all these years. Gertrude knows. She's the only one. Do you hate me, Mama? Tell me, because I don't know if I did wrong or not. You're angry, so you tell lies. Now, I don't want to hear any more of your childish lies. No! You have to listen, Mama. When I was in school, I let boys touch me. Boys I met in the park, boys I met in the movies, even boys I met here in the store. Nights when you were asleep, I'd go down and let them in. And not just boys, Mama, men too. You don't know what you're saying, Bella. I needed somebody to touch me, Mama. Somebody to hold me and tell me I was pretty. You never told me that. Some of them even told me they loved me, but I never believed them because I knew what they wanted from me. Except John. He 
he did love me, because he was like me, because he understood me. He was the only one I ever felt safe with. And I thought, maybe for the first time, I could be happy. That's why I ran away. I even brought him the $5,000, and then maybe he'd get the courage to leave home too. Is this something else that you dreamed up? Where would you get $5,000? Does this look like a dream, Mama? Where, where did you get this money? Did, did you take from me? You know where I keep my money. No one knows but you! You're a thief! You take from your own mother! You're a thief! Go on! Oh, Hit me, Mama! Make me stupid and crazy! Because that's really what you think anyway, isn't it? No, you get out of this house and go live with your thief friend! Oh, you want the rest of the money? You go take it! It won't last you long, and you'll have to steal again to stay alive, believe me. I don't want the rest of your money. You can have this too. Louie gave it to me. I stayed at Gertrude's house the last two nights, and Louie came to say goodbye and gave me this out of his little black satchel. God knows how much more he had. I didn't ask him. Maybe he's a thief, Mama, but he's my brother. And he loves me enough to want to help me. Thieves and sick little girls. That's what you have, Mama. Only God didn't make them that way. You did. We're alive, Mama, but that is all we are. Aaron and Rose are the lucky ones. <gasps> no! Oh, oh, God, no, Bella, please. Please don't, don't say that to me. I, I'm sorry, Mama. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, yes. Yes, you did. It's my punishment for, for being alive, for surviving my own children, not dying before them. It's my sin. Go on and take Louis' money. Go, you, you take it. You think I don't know what he is? He was a thief since he was five years old. The year Aaron died. And I closed off from him and everybody. From you and Louis, from Gert and Eddie. I lost Rose and then Aaron. And I stopped feeling because I couldn't stand losing anymore. Mama. <laughs> no, no, go live your life. Open your restaurant, have your own babies. If it's a mistake, let it be your mistake. If I've done wrong by you, that's for me to deal with. And that is how I've lived my life. And no one, not even you, can change that for me now. There's no restaurant, Mama. He's afraid to be a businessman or a manager. He likes being an usher. He likes sitting in the dark all day, watching movies whenever he wants. That way he can live in a world that he can feel safe in. He doesn't want babies. He doesn't want to get married. He wants to live with his parents because he knows they love him. And that's enough for him. Then maybe he's more lucky than you. Maybe he is. But I'm never going to stop wanting what I don't have. It's too late to go back for me. Maybe I'm still a child. But now there's just enough woman inside me to make me miserable. We have to learn how to deal with that somehow, you and me. And it can never be the same anymore. I'll put my things away. I think we've both said enough for today.
don't you? Dear Eddie, this postcard is from Bella. I just want to let you know that Jay and Nadia are all right. And I have some good news for you, except I don't have no more room. Love, Bella. Pop's gonna be in there. I don't know, but we made it, Artie. Ten months here and we're still alive. If we got through Grandma and we're all right. You know who I miss? Uncle Louie. I'm glad those two guys never caught him. Nah, but maybe the Japs will. You think he's safer for in the South Pacific? Nah. But he's probably the richest guy in Guadalcanal. Oh, thank God. I thought you'd be gone before I got back. I ran all over Yonkers looking for these. Okay. Close your eyes. The football is for you, Jay. And the basketball is for you, Artie. Do you like them? Holy mackerel! <laughs> this is incredible. I hope it's the right size. I just took a guess. This, this is one of the best gifts I ever got, Aunt Bella. Well, you two are the best gifts I ever got, too. I hate to give you up. You don't have to. We're coming out all the time. I, I really love this, Aunt Bella. Thank you. Well, it's not just from me. It's from Grandma, too. I just have to tell her later. <laughs> well, boys, Grandma and I are through talking. You ready to go? Hey, Pop, look what Aunt Bella got me. Ooh. And Aunt, Grandma. Aunt Bella, go out for a pass. <laughs> What's this? What did I tell you about games in the house? They're not playing games. Mama, they know better than that. If you break something, you pay for it, believe me. Thank you for the ball, Grandma. I love it. I never owned a football in my life, Grandma. All right, Grandma's tired, boys. Uh, let's say goodbye and go. Oh, we said goodbye this morning. Two goodbyes is too much. Well, Mama, I just wanted to say thank you. You've done a lot for me and the boys. I don't know how to repay you for that. I'll tell you how. Don't do it again. I pray to God I won't have to. And if you do, I'll say no again. But this time I'll mean it. You know, uh, when the Louis went into the army, I thought about sending you the money. But then I thought, no, Eddie needs to do things for himself. And you did. That's good. Yes, Mama, I'm glad you finally approve of me. I didn't say that. I said it was good. I'll accept that, Mama. I guess you're going to get married now, and I won't see your boys for another ten years. Oh, I'm not ready for marriage yet. And uh, from now on, the boys won't be strangers. They'll be grandchildren. And now... I'm going to kiss you goodbye, whether you like it or not. Thank you for not putting up a fight. <laughs> goodbye, Bella. What can I say? I know, Eddie. I know. I love you so much. I'll meet you downstairs, boys. Thank Grandma. Go on. Um, uh, thank you for taking us in, Grandma. I know it wasn't easy for you. No, it wasn't. It wasn't easy for us either, but I think I learned a lot since I'm here. Some good and some bad. Do you know what I mean, Grandma? You're not afraid of the truth. That's good. You want to know what my truth is? Everything hurts. Anything you get good in life, you also lose something. I guess I'm too young to understand that. And I'm too old to forget it. Go on, go on. Take care of your father. He's a good boy, but he always needs a little help. 
Well, you sure gave me and Jakob a lot of help, Grandma. Dankerschön. That means thank you. He's tricky, this one. Tries to get around me. Don't try to change me. Old people are not altogether wrong. You're absolutely right. Can King Archer give you a kiss goodbye? What were you two boys looking for that night under the poison berry? My money, maybe? No, I swear! You should have looked behind the malted machine. <laughs> well, I'll get dinner started. Do you mind eating early? Because I'm going out tonight with a friend. It's a girl mama. I have a new girlfriend. She likes me and I like her. And she also has a brother I like. He works in the library. He can read everything. <laughs> I'd like to have them both over for dinner one night. Could we do that, mama? It's all right, no rush. You don't have to make up your mind right now. I thought Thursday might be a good night. Be careful. It's my heart. It's not my watch you're holding. It's my heart. It's called music, it's Mama. It's not the note I sent you that you quickly burned. It's not the book I lent you that you never returned. Remember, it's my heart. The heart with which so willingly I part It's not the note I sent you that you quickly burned. It's not the book I let you that you never returned. Remember, it's my heart.